Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This one is based on a question from Al Wilson. He says, hello, Dave, many years ago, think vacuum tubes and CRTs, that was a while ago, when I was 13, the electronics and ham bug bit me. I studied very hard, but could never get the code. As the years went by, and he got a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering and a first-class radio telephone license, I'm now retired as a TV engineer. A friend told me that they no longer require code, and VHF HTs are less than $50. That is true, they are, but I will point out that you get what you pay for. Uh, since I am still infected from the ham bug, I took a practice test cold, scored in the low 70s with very little studying. I'm now in the mid-90s for the tech in general, but I'm making stupid mistakes like uh, PSK and FT8 error corrections, uh, F and E layer <laughs> questions that has to do with the ionosphere, and so on. My question is, should... I just take my test and get my ticket and study more before I take my, or study more before I take my test. For your information, I do plan on getting my extra ticket shortly or about one year after getting the general. It says 73. So the question is, how do you know when you're ready to take the test? Um, the test fee is just $15 at the moment. Now there will be an additional $35 fee for the FCC, but that hasn't uh, taken effect yet. But it's about 15, I think, to take the test. So the most you would lose if you take it and fail, it would be $15. So um, it's a little minor incentive to try and pass it the first time, but pretty minor. Um, the question, I think it comes down to this. Do you view passing your technician in general as an end goal or as an entrance, the beginning. I would like to think of taking and passing the technician test and the general test as the beginning of your ham radio adventure. You've opened the gate and found your way down the path, but you've just barely gotten in the garden and can't enjoy the garden's delights just yet until you do a little bit more exploring. Now, you need 70% to pass uh, the exam. Um, when you think about it, you can miss several questions. We've got 35 questions on the TAC, 35 on the general, and 50 on the extra. I have suggested to many people that if you like passing tests, go ahead and pass your your tech and your general get on the air and wait two years before you get your extra because by then it will be extremely more meaningful to you than to just pass the test and say okay I've done everything there is to do. I have seen a lot of people who go zero to extra in one sitting who don't last very long in ham radio. Um, I know of one personally who lives, oh, 30, 40 miles away from me, uh, who after he passed his extra came to me and says, what do I do now? And he says, I got to get a radio. Well, I said, why don't you watch some of my videos and really learn how ham radio works? Well, he went to somebody else and got instructions for what radio to buy. And he had the money, so he bought the most expensive radio he could find and put up a tower and a beam and all of that stuff and then here come a year later he sold it all and got out of ham radio because he, he viewed passing the extra as the end goal and it's not it's a beginning it's a way station on your journey to you know really understanding what's going on having a lot of fun with it and you know if you stay with ham radio for a while there will be at least a piece of it 
in which you will become absolutely expert, whether CW or DXing or something like that, you'll really know how it works. I had a question from a patron yesterday um, wanting to know um, about the percentage reliability of a link connection uh, at different power factors. And unfortunately, that question doesn't really make sense in terms of the radios that we have. Now, some commercial company may try that after a lot of experimentation and a lot of modeling of the ionosphere may come up with some link reliabilities, but it's just not something hams do. Um, we tend to say, okay, I want NVIS over a hundred mile distance at night, so uh, I'll put up an 80 meter dipole, 25 feet, which is pretty low, and then use 100 watts. And that works a lot of the time. That's about the best uh, we can say. Ham radio is a kind of a best case uh, symptom. We like to see what kinds of communications we can do when conditions are at their best, their peak. Just what can we eke out? Um, whereas commercial communications, they have to go for the worst case. The policemen have to be able to get to the 911 center under any conditions. So you have to put in a system that's designed for whatever um, service level agreement you have in mind when you put that sort of stuff together. Ham radio doesn't work that way. So when are you ready to take your test? Um, I advocate, as you know from my videos, I've got videos on training for Tech General and Extra. I try to teach a person so that when they get their ticket, they're a ham, not just a ticket holder or license holder, but they're a ham. Um, now, let me give you an example from airplanes. I had ground school from Sean McGrath, who is a ham and a patron and a mentor um, in, uh, I think, Vermont. And uh, he gave me ground school over, um, um, not, not Zoom, but uh, the Microsoft system, which I can't remember right now. Sign of getting old. Um, and we worked through that, and I asked him a million questions, and I took lots of notes and everything. And then he said, get the book. This is the question and answer book for the sport pilot test. Um, the FAA doesn't make the test questions public like the FCC does, but they did at one time, and enough of them are public now that they were able to put a book together. And he says, it's a pretty thick book. Um, on things that I needed to know for my uh, sport pilot test. And he says, do not take the test until you have laid eyes on every single question in here and have answered it to your satisfaction. If there are any questions in there where the answer seems strange, call. And I did on some of them. I couldn't figure them out. But I did. I went through this all the way and uh, I passed the exam first sitting. Uh, the score doesn't matter, but it was a 90. Uh, well, it does matter a little bit in the FAA because they will tell you basically the knowledge areas you were deficient in on the exam, and then you have to go back to your um, instructor pilot and uh, get retrained on those issues, and there's actually a signature involved that that has happened. It's not that way on ham radio. In ham radio, the score doesn't matter. No one, no one cares about your score, or what you passed with. You may care about it. You may have wanted to pass with a 100 or a 70 or whatever. If you get the 70%, it's actually a little bit more because uh, 35 questions doesn't divide exactly by 0.7 um, or multiply by 0.7 and give you an integer answer. Um, if you get a 70 and you never tell anybody, it's the same thing as if you got a 100. Okay. In fact, on my extra exam, I took my extra exam as practice because 
well, at th that time, the fees were quite a bit lower, and, and I was working with the youth group, Bark Jr., up in Boulder. And uh, I took the, uh, the, the code exam back when it was 20 words a minute, and my page was gibberish. However, I have had enough CW contacts in my life that I could pick out the key parts and, and scored a 90 on the test, which was passing. So I took the written exam, and the written exam, well, of course, there's no code test today. The written exam, um, I wasn't really ready for it. I wasn't really ready. I took it, I handed it to them, and then I said, tell me if I passed or did not pass, do not tell me my score. I don't want to know my score. And they said, you passed. I said, that's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. Needless to say, some of the studying uh, went by the wayside, but then I started to, um, you know, really dig into this. And probably the best way that I've learned about ham radio is through this YouTube channel, because I have to learn in order to teach. And that's, it's, a, it's a truth that the teacher always learns more than the students. And I've learned a lot of things by looking into a lot of things. So where does that lead us? When do you take the test? If you are getting in the 80s and 90s on your practice exams, you're probably ready to take the test. Unless you're a perfectionist and you want to get everything right. But I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure that's going to do you a huge amount of good to be a perfectionist. Take the test, put it behind you, and recognize that once you're a ham, be a ham. Get on the air. Join a club. You may have to do some club shopping. I understand that. There are clubs and then there are clubs. Um, there's one guy I know in Southern California who started his own club as a tech. Started his own club by bringing people in and then every week he'd have activities and nets on the air and, and field trips and all of this kind of stuff and his club grew like mad. I did a video some time ago on how uh, to uh, get more activity in your club and he did all of those things. In fact, I was kind of stealing from him uh, when I, I did that video. I had him in mind. I have since heard of quite a number of uh, clubs, a couple on the East Coast, where they have really taken to heart this idea of pulling people in, mentoring them, giving them something to do, and so on. And these clubs have grown by leaps and bounds. There's one over in, on the Front Range in Colorado, and uh, it's sort of southeast of Colorado in Parker, that uh, has done something very similar. And they said they're close to 300 members now. Uh, because, you know, they always have a program that's interesting, that's full of good technical information that is accessible to everybody in the audience. Um, they have activities on the air activities, group activities, and so on, mostly on the air right now because of COVID. So when are you ready to take your test? You're ready to take your test when you feel like you can pass it. Okay? When you feel like you can pass it. Remember, you ought to be getting in the 80s and 90s on your practice test because there will always be jitters and nerves when you get the real test. Um, just like there was, well, I was pretty sure when I sat down for this that I would pass it. Um, and I really did look at every single question in there. And it's a good thing I did. Um, I missed four questions. Um, there were... Um, two questions I had never seen before. They weren't in this book. And then there were two questions that were in this book, but I blew it. Okay, but I still got the 90 I passed. I've got my written test out of the way. I still have to do my oral exam and my check flight. By the way, I was just up at the airport this afternoon looking at the airplane. That's another video in and of itself. I gotta tell you, Whoa, we're just barely staying ahead of the problems on this airplane. 
by the time we get done with all the things that we're doing, this is going to be one fantastic airplane and everything will work right uh, in there. Uh, in this case, uh, we're replacing all the fuel line uh, because the uh, plastic fuel line that was being used was cracking. You don't want fuel line to crack. So anyway, it's all being replaced. So there you go. Um, try and answer your question there. Um, uh, this is for Al Wilson. Al, go ahead. If you're getting in the 80s and 90s, take the test. Take the uh, tech in general. Uh, get yourself a little handy talkie so you can talk to the club. Uh, and then uh, get yourself a nice general station so you can enjoy. I consider the HF bands where the real fun is in ham radio. You can really enjoy that. In a couple years from now, give your extra a try and make that jump to extra because by then it'll really, really mean something to you. Because the extra gives you all of the privileges available to any ham, a lot of them. And by then, you'll know how to use them. They'll be meaningful. And somebody can look up at you and say, he's an extra, he knows. He really knows. Okay, so that was kind of a ramble, but the basic bottom line is this. Take the test when you think you're ready. If you're in the scoring consistently in the 80s and 90s on practice tests, you're probably ready to go take the exam. If you want to take the tech in general at the same time, go for it. I really recommend that you study the videos, study the book, and then study the question. And like my instructor told me on this book, lay your eyes on every question and make sure the answer makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, go talk to your Elmer and find out what's going on. Okay, if you'd like to help support this channel financially, you can go to decastlercom support. Um, or somebody was asking about the tip jar, it's on that support page, or you can go to decastlercom slash tip hyphen jar. And until we next meet, 73.